Hey yo, it is Guido coming at you with a Tactics Talk, guys. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. As always, appreciate your support of the channel. Today we have at Jakanazo, I think that's how you say it, Object 277, Tier 10 Russian Heavy Tank. This is that really fast Russian Heavy Tank that's kind of the meta right now. You see a lot of these things, I think, in competitive as well. It's one of the better heavy tanks out there. Armor's okay, turret armor's pretty good. Has a lot of speed, has a pretty good gun. It's got really everything you want. The ability to get around the battlefield, at least for a heavy anyway, as far as mobility goes. You can see how fast it is. He's just trucking out in front of everybody. So, Jakanazo is headed over here on Abbey, spawned into the south, over to the west side. He's going to go fight in the heavy brawling area. You'll see that a couple tanks go over to the east side. You will, can also tell these top tier as a tier 10. There are only four tier 10s on each side right there. Really a good setup for being top tier. So he's going to come around this corner, and we are in sniper mode. I will say one thing, uh, Jakanazo, you, you drive around in sniper mode a little more than I think I would, especially at this position. I'm looking to see if there's somebody faster than me that got here first, right? So I just want to be zoomed out a bit. We're going to come around this corner. You have a little thing I do where I zoom in and out, and that's fine too because you're kind of looking. It looks like you're, you are looking at places you think the shots are going to come from and then all of a sudden he's six by six surprises you and me both and gets away with it you see him you sort of chase him and then decide not to there's no artillery and right now you're way out ahead so there's no reason just in case a couple of their really fast tanks decide to jump all over you which would be unusual right here because if you do that you tend to get jumped on by all the guys following it you see the t57 heavy the 110 this game really is a lot about timing We'll talk about how it goes, but he's already lost two guys right off the bat, and it looks like the middle's in a bit of trouble. We're going to come up here and start working on this. The Chieftain, oh, we just barely miss. The 6x6 six six somehow makes that U-turn and doesn't take any damage except for on the way out. All right, this was a huge mistake right here. I would not have chased the 6x6. Six six. You had to know there were plenty of guys sitting there and waiting. So that, those were hit points you didn't need to lose right there. Nice little shot, though, into the object 430. And now we're going to back out. All right, timing. You can tell that one of their tier 10s is over here, and they're gobbling up. They've already killed three of your guys. The 252, you have already died over here. Really, for my money at this point, it's all or nothing. This needs to be a massive push. Being able to coordinate that in pubs is near impossible. The only way to really do it is to start it yourself, and you're probably going to eat a bunch of shots. So I completely understand why you don't do it. But if I'm looking at this game, I'm thinking this is your only chance. You have to get in there and take these deck guys down quickly because everywhere else you're starting to lose. And I think you make what is a good you know, little tactical decision, which is to change the fight and come around this way. But it splits your forces a little bit, and the red guys are able to, with less tanks, hold you off because your guys up top aren't being aggressive and pushing in. So you're going to go around this way. And now we get down here and we get into a little face brawl. But we're, we're quickly losing the time we need to make this happen. It's already 0 to 4. They're near our cap. Your whole stack, the, the power that your team has is one place. And it has to be applied now. And unfortunately, everybody plays peekaboom, which is pretty standard. This one was going to be hard to win no matter what you did. That guy was smart enough to turn around and put his front armor to you, which is problematic. It's a pretty strong tank. Looks like we're running a couple small kits. Or is that a large kit we got over here? A couple small kits. Oh my gosh, hold on. Are you running a manual fire extinguisher? No, it's automatic. Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> and a lot of heat. So these two turn around. Put a little shot into the 140. We'll back out. We eat a shot back, but it looks like no damage came in. I said 140, I meant 430. All right, a little bounce. Now we're going to push in. Nicely aimed shot underneath. That gets into him. And you can see we're just slowly, slowly whittling away. Now this, I mentioned this timing thing and what your team needed to do, not because you necessarily had control over it, but really a lot of times people send me these replays. They say, hey, how could I have won this? What could we have done? And really in this case, the only thing that was going to save this game was, was your power taking out this flank as fast as possible and then regrouping. You were already well behind the power curve, and even that was going to be a low percentage play. The play you're making at this point is the let's farm some damage play, and I don't say that as a pejorative or, or to say you did the wrong thing. I'm just saying sometimes in the game that's really all you've got, 
if if you wanted to do the Hail Mary, it was get in amongst these guys and take them down. And that was going to be hard to do. It really was. So we're being very careful. The T-57 looks like he has reloaded, so he wants to get in there and start working on guys. So we'll come up here. Oops, I got the wrong view. Nice little bait. He takes a shot. You get in there and get another one. And I would go in just exactly as you did. I'd cut around. I wouldn't go right into his face. I'd go by him. Make him look several different directions. But the T-57 does a nice job. Then we take down the Type 4, start working on him. The T-57 needs to go hide and get reloaded. And unfortunately, one of their campers finally, because the, his team is winning by so much, finally started moving forward. And that's part of the timing issue on this game. You will have players who will sit back and camp for a good portion of the game. And I always recommend don't push into cap when you win your flank and let them play any earlier than they otherwise would. But generally, eventually, the majority of them will move forward. And it's when they see something like this, right? They don't recognize the win early like, like good players do. But eventually, even this situation will somehow register in the amoebic brain. And they will start going, ooh, I can move forward and maybe get my one shot on the, uh, <laughs> the T-57. So you don't have a lot of great options here. One thing I would do is kind of check what's going on. But you're doing a nice job with the maneuver on the Type 4. I don't know if you knew the, the JPZ was back there, but you didn't really have a lot of good cho chance or choices. <clears throat> we take him down. You had to take this guy down, and if you made separation between him and you to try to also cover up against the JPZ, then all of a sudden you're giving that big derp a nice easy shot. And we kind of get lucky here because I don't. It's just pretty sad. This poor guy completely misses. Now, one thing that can be said: you created a line of sight from left to right, and that was important because it makes him maneuver a little bit. And every little movement you make, you know, you notice the really good players are kind of really moving a lot, especially when they're peeking and poking, trying to be. Uh, as random as possible so that people cannot time it all right so any kind of movement or jiggle or angle you throw on people will will give them a little bit of trouble you do a nice job going by that guy right there and that's a bummer but actually if you look at the shot check it out where it went oh right behind where there was any hole so you really needed it a little bit forward see how that thing slopes back right there i was a little bit surprised myself but it, look at that it went right through <laughs> Just no hitbox back where you hit him right there it was a nice idea. And instead of going for that one, you go for the front one, which was a nice job, but he had a kit. And then we're stuck on the wall, and holy cow, we can't get away. And now we're, oof, 1,041 sucks. And we're going to take a little bit more damage here. Why not? Just on the way out. And we check our six, and holy cow, here comes the silly six by six. Get a little thump on him. There's a little 94 damage. Oh, Maybe auto-aim that guy. It was, looked like kind of a, a third-person thing. As long as there's not a lot of line of sight, you might have been able to centroid him better. But, you know, it looked like a pretty good shot. RNG just did not do its thing. And we're trying to back out. And down we go from the RHM. One of the problems with the 277 is that it really is kind of soft. The RHM actually pinned him with just regular APCR right there. He gets a kill, 4,598 damage, 706 assist. And... Pretty much a romple stomp. Yeah, it's 515. It was not even that close, really, to be honest. You did get the, the T95 FV, the M451, and the Type 4, and the 430. So you won this flank-ish, just not fast enough for you to have enough hit points and tanks to get somewhere else. Really, that initial look where you went, ooh, we've got him. The problem with, with that is it's pretty hyper-aggressive. You would have led the charge. You would have taken the hits. And you didn't know if maybe there was a couple follow-up guys behind them anyway. And maybe the JPZ was slowly moving there the whole time. You never know. Uh, but he did not show up till late, so I think he probably camped for a while, a while right there. To be honest, you did about as best you can. You kind of, I think, prioritized farming a little bit of damage towards the end, knowing that things were going pretty bad. That can be effective as well for winning the game. Sometimes if you just keep whittling them down and trying to preserve your hit points, uh, good things can happen. And you can add more and more damage and maybe even put yourself into a position to win. I just don't think on this one your team lost in every direction. The only place your team was strong, they failed to push or do anything with it, really. Uh, and, you know, I'll, ta I'll, I'll hang a little bit of that on you as the top tier, but fully understanding why 
you know, you didn't just drive down the road, upper road right there, take a bunch of hits because it's highly likely your team would have just sat there and looked at you, you know, giving you the whale eye, like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then, then you would have been dead and lost anyway. <laughs> all right, guys, that is all I've got for today. Thanks for tuning in. Sometimes there's not much to do other than just farm a little bit of damage in there. That's all I've got. See ya.